Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to show you how to fix your own squad. I'm going to present to you 21 mistakes you can look for on video. Before I get into that topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right, this is going to be a long tutorial, but basically in this video, I'm going to go over 21 common squat mistakes. We're going to analyze them one by one, and I'm going to try to help you fix your own squat by looking for these on video. So when you take squat videos, I recommend doing a couple things. Number one, taking a few side videos. That way you can watch your bar path and you can kind of check depth. But most importantly, I want you to take videos from behind. This will allow you to check your knee angle, your hip angle, your foot angle, your the unevenness of the bar, so many different things. This is the best view overall to check your squat. We're gonna dive into that just a little bit in this video. Before I do get started, if you need any help, if you need a form check, don't hesitate to send me your video on Instagram at BenTheBarman. I'll do a quick form check or join TeamMassiveIron.com. All right, so first we're going to go over this PDF, 21 issues and mistakes to look for on video. When we're done, I have some actual submitted squad videos from you guys. We're going to comb through those and look at some of these mistakes. All right, let's jump in. How to fix your own squat from looking at your squat videos. Issue number one, is the bar centered on your back? An off-centered bar can lead to an awkward balance issues on your squat, hip shift and hamstring and knee stress. So one thing you want to check on video, is the bar centered on your back? If it's a little bit off, just a little bit, even an inch, you, it can cause some hip shift in the hole, you can see a little bit of hip shift and that can put stress on your knees and on your hips. All right, number two, is your grip even? This is a common one as well. And it goes along with the bar being even on your back. If your grip is uneven, this little bit of off-centered type of starting position, when you squat, it can cause a little bit of hip shift, just like with the off-centered bar. And it can place some extra stress on your knees, on your hips. So check your videos. Is your grip even? Before you get under the bar, you want to make sure you have an even grip on both sides, then get under the bar. All right, issue number three is your grip too narrow. It's very common in the modern squatting landscape for everyone to feel like they have to take the most narrow possible grip even if it's bringing shoulder discomfort or creating a crappy squat. Now, you're probably asking, how can too narrow of a grip create a crappy squat? Well, how can it contribute to a poor squat? Well, sometimes if we're forcing it too tight, it can become too narrow, and that can create upper body looseness. You want to have a comfortable, natural grip with. From there, you can lock down your elbows and get some good upper back tightness. I've seen some cases where the grip width is so narrow that they have a hard time creating any upper back tightness because the arms are all flared up or flying all over the place. So keep a natural, comfortable grip width, even if it's a little bit wider. Narrow is not always better if it creates upper or if it leads to upper body looseness. All right, one thing to look for is flying elbows, right? If your elbows are way back, uh, if the, you need to have your elbows just mildly locked down. We don't have to get excessive here, but when you're under the bar, you want it, before you squat, you want to kind of pull that bar down just slightly on your back or on your traps. This will kind of lock the elbows down a little bit. When your elbows are flying, when your elbows are just loose and flying up, there's generally no upper body tightness. And this can kind of like, when you're watching a squat, if you see the elbows flying up during the squat, that's even worse. That's going to kind of push your body weight forward. So make sure you kind of just lock them down tightly, or, you know, not excessively. And when you squat, kind of pull the bar down as you squat. 
All right, issue number five, dancing fingers. This is one that <laughs> this is one that's more common than you would uh, expect. When you grip the bar, you want to make sure you you're you're locked in. You don't want to have dancing fingers, and you don't want to have a loose grip. Upper body tightness is going to start at your grip. So once you grip the bar, you need to be locked in and not releasing the grip and not dancing your fingers. You want to grip it. You don't have to do a death grip. You don't have to death grip it to the point where you can't sustain your grip. But that grip needs to be locked in. That grip needs to be tight. And that grip needs to be focused. Watching your squat videos, if you see dancing fingers, it's usually an indicator that you might not be getting that degree of upper body tightness that you need for a squat. Now, when it comes to upper body tightness, we don't need to over obsess and we don't need to over focus. But if your upper body is loose, it's going to contribute to a sloppy squat. So we need some reasonable rules in place when we're squatting. Get a nice grip, get your elbows locked down and, and get encourage that upper body tightness. All right, issue number six, are you forcing your head to look down, like forcing it to look down? Are you keeping it in a natural, neutral position, or are you forcing your head down? A non-neutral head position can place unwanted stress on the lower back and reduce upper body tightness. Basically, where your head goes, your lower back will follow. If you have your head in a neutral position, position, your lower back is going to be right about where you need it to be. You're going to be able to brace that core properly. If you force your head down, you're pushing your weight a little bit forward and you're going to place more stress on your lower back. So there are some squat cults out there that want you to throw the body, throw your head forward or look down. Keep it neutral. Keep it neutral. Where the head goes, the lower back follows. We do not want to encourage lower back stress or pressure. We do not want to toss our weight forward. We do not want to encourage upper body looseness. So just keep your head neutral. All right, issue number seven, are you pushing your hips back before you squat? Now, we're going to talk about this because I don't want anybody to misunderstand. You see this occasionally where lifters will compartmentalize the squat. They'll turn it into a series of movements, right? It's very jerky, very, very, uh, very forced instead of a fluid squat. When you throw your hips back before your squat, boom, you're kind of pushing your weight forward and then you're squatting. When you squat, you it's okay to move your hips back, but you want to do so as you squat down, not hips back, then squat, hips back, then squat, right? You want to, you want to lock in, you want to brace, and then as you squat, you want to think about pushing your butt straight to the ground, and then your hips will go back naturally. When we compartmentalize the squat and move our hips back and then squat down, we're almost starting from a good morning position. And this puts us in a deficit. This puts us kind of in a hole when it comes to maintaining good quality squat form, hitting depth, and not putting extra stress on our lower back. All right, number eight, dive bombing. Or basically, you're, you're in the squat and you just, boom, the, the, the bottom falls out of the elevator. When this happens... You, you're reducing control. You're placing extra stress on your knees, hips, and lower back. It's just a, a uncontrolled lowering of the squat. Now, I've seen some big top-level Olympic lifters do this, and you know what? I'm not going to get into that. These guys are super strong. They're amazing athletes. But for most of us that are just trying to get the most out of, out of a squat we can, get the most quad development, build strength, we need to maintain control as we descend. Dive bombing tends to just completely loosen the upper body, loosen the lower body, and we're going to beat the living crap out of our joints. We're not top-level Olympic athletes. We're not we're not genetic freaks. We need to control the squat. We need to control the squat down. This doesn't mean super slow or anything ridiculous like this. But when we dive bomb, at the bottom, we tend to get really loose. We tend to see butt wing. Things will wobble, the hips and the knees. We're just placing stress on the lower body in negative ways. All right, number nine, are you forcing a squat too low? This is actually pretty common. The whole ass to grass mindset, like we have to go as low as possible or it doesn't count or we're not going to get quad development. And sometimes this encourages lifters to go so low 
to just seek that ass to grass level where they experience butt wink, they experience lower back pressure and they're experiencing looseness and stress on their joints and the hole. This can create a loss of power in the hole and a lot of lower back stress. So when you're squatting, don't worry about ass to grass. Worry about good form. Worry about good control. Worry about just going down until it feels natural and then coming back up. When we go, I see some lifters just go down way too low. It's almost like they go down there a little bit below parallel. And then they're like, I got to go lower. So they try to sink down and they, they get loose at that point. They, they get the, their lower back rounds. They pick up this lower back stress. So squat to a natural, comfortable depth and don't force it beyond that. You don't have to seek the holy grail of ass to grass. All right, number 10, are your hips rising before your head? When you're in the hole, you have your, I don't know if I can get this on here, you have your head and you have your hips. They should be moving at about the same rate. If your hips are coming up before your head, you're going to fold. So in the hole, if you're nice and tight, if you're loose, this can contribute to your, your hips coming up before your head, especially if your upper body is loose. So if your hips are coming up before your head, you're probably a little bit loose. From the hole, I want you to think about driving up or standing up or driving up into the bar and keeping that hip discipline. Don't allow the hips to ride up faster than the head. This is partially a discipline. You really have to be focused on it. If you get sloppy and those hips are coming up while your head's not moving up, you're going to fold. You're going to place a lot of stress on your lower back and you're probably going to just cut your set short by a few reps. So take your time on your squats. If this is you, focus on driving up into the bar and keeping your hips in that good leverage position until you can get to the point where you can drive them forward. All right, issue number 11, heels lifting and turning in. This is something that most people are not looking for, but this is a huge, huge, issue and something I want you guys to get used to looking for on squats. We can really see this when we're filming a squat from behind. This is one reason I want you to film your squats from behind. When you watch a squat and somebody has their kind of their knee, their, their a wider stance and their knees are inside of their foot position, when they squat down, you're going to see the heels raise and turn in a little bit. On a squat, whatever your foot angle is, when you squat, you want that thigh angle to match that foot angle. If your knee is inside the angle of your foot, it's going to make it almost impossible to hit depth. So as you sink with a, that knees in type of squat, your heels are going to rise and lift. This is one of the first things I look for when I'm analyzing a squat. Are the heels rising and lifting in? If so, we might have to narrow the squat or we have to focus on pushing the knees open a little bit to match the angle of the foot. It's very common for lifters to try to squat wider than they need to. So if this is happening to you, I would encourage you maybe to narrow your squat just a little bit and try to push your, make sure you're pushing your knees open to match the angle of your feet and watch the heels to see if this is improving. All right, issue number 12, bar moving forward as you descend. This is a side view thing, so you're going to have to watch your squat from the side, but you want to see basically the bar coming straight up and down as you squat. There can be some little variants, right? That's normal. There can be minor variants rep to rep. But if when you're squatting, when you're squatting down, if the bar starts moving forward like this, you have an issue. And it's usually related to the, the last point we just touched on. If your squat is too wide or if your knees are in relative to the angle of your feet, as you get in the hole, your your weight, you can't, you're going to struggle to hit depth. And what's going to happen is your body weight's going to move forward to try to compensate. Try to you're you're trying to hit depth. So basically there's no way for you to go but to fold. And when you fold, the bar path is going to move forward. The fix for this is the same fix for the last tip or last issue that I talked about. Maybe bring your stance in a little bit. Make sure as you squat, the angle of your thigh is matching the angle of your feet. All right, issue number 13, butt wink. We've touched on this a little bit, and there's a number of contributors to butt wink. Trying to go too deep, right? You hit your depth and you feel pressure to go ass to grass, and you go even lower, and then you get butt wink. Butt wink is when you go down in a squat 
butt and your, your butt kind of, you're trying to push your butt down a little bit and your upper body gets a little bit loose. There's no more room for your hamstrings to stretch. So what happens is your butt gets pulled in as you try to hit depth and your lower back kind of rounds. That's a stupid, simple way of putting it. But your hamstrings run out of room to stretch. So the deeper you sink, the more that butt curves in, that butt winks, so to speak. And this is, again, caused by lifters trying to go too deep or losing lower body tightness in the hole, trying to trying to just squat down, dive bomb, um, just rock bottom their squat. You see this a lot with dive bombing squats. Guys will just dive bomb and their butt will curve in, and then they'll just place a lot of extra stress on their lower back, and they can't figure out why their lower back feels like crap. Going too low on a squat, going to the point where you're getting butt wink is not a good thing. All right, issue number 14, hips shifting to one side as you squat. Watch this closely. This will happen. You'll see this happen occasionally. Someone will squat and their hips will shift a little bit in the hole. Now, we touched on some points earlier that can contribute to this. Uneven bar on your back, uneven grip, even upper body looseness. Hip shifting to one side is commonly driven by poor tightness, poor focus, or not focus on driving the butt straight down. Now, this is a tip you don't hear often, but it's something I share with my clients. When you squat, I want you to think about driving your butthole straight down to the ground. That'll help you stay centered. Sometimes lifters are so focused on pushing their hips back or just mentally focused on hitting proper depth that they don't really think about driving their butt straight down. When you squat, think about driving your butthole straight down. This will help you stay centered. All right, issue number 15. This is a big one in modern squatting. The invasion of strength training, the invasion of the strength training mentality or the powerlifting mentality has moved a lot of muscle heads into a squat stance that is wider than they need. Now, I am not against strength training. I'm not railing against powerlifting. But what I'm saying is if we're, for most of us, we need to have a reasonable, comfortable squat width. Some of us are forcing it too tight and doing low bar because we feel like that's the way we should be squatting. If your stance is too wide, what's going to happen is it's going to be harder for you to push your knees out to match the angle of your feet. A wide stance squat is going to push that knee angle, that foot angle out a little bit. The angle of your knee, the angle of your knee has to match the angle of your foot in the hole. And if your stance is really out, you got to push your knees open to be able to hit depth. Nine times out of 10, when a squatter is squatting with their stance too wide, they're not going to be able to open their knees enough. And this is going to contribute to them folding forward in the hole to getting lower body looseness, upper body looseness. And they're just going to place extra stress on their hips and on their knees and you're probably going to see their hips, or excuse me, you're going to see their heels rise and lift in as well. All right, issue number 16, feet pointed out too wide. You want your feet pointed out kind of naturally, a little bit angled out, but not too wide, not like a 45 degree angle. This goes back to the previous point. The wider the angle of your foot, the more you're going to need to open your knees. If you have your feet angled out, your knees are going to have to go out to match that angle. And there's a good chance you're not going to be able to do it. And again, this is going to contribute to you falling forward in the hole or upper or lower body looseness, placing stress on your knees and on your hips, all that kind of good stuff. So make sure you're, the angle of your feet are just natural, pointed out a little bit naturally, not forced out at a 45 degree angle. All right, issue number 17, inability to reach proper depth. This is commonly caused by a lot of the issues that we just talked about. If you're looking at your squat from a side view and you can't hit depth, nine times out of 10, what I want to see from a lifter next is a rear view of their squat because I'm pretty certain either their stance is too wide, the angle of their toes are angled out way too wide, or their knees are in. If these things are occurring, and they're usually occurring together, 
feet too wide, stance too wide, knees are in, it's going to make it almost impossible for you to reach depth. All right, issue number 18, this is also a big issue, and we're going to get into that in the videos we're about to watch. No big breath and brace. When I see somebody squatting, you should be able to see almost a visual big breath, brace, and then a squat rep. So when you're under the bar, you're going to pull down just slightly to lock down your elbows and get a little bit of upper body tightness. You should see a big visible breath and then a lockdown. You should be able to see that to some degree before every rep. If not, if you're not bracing, if you're not getting a big breath, if you're not bracing your upper body, you're contributing to looseness. You're cr contributing to a sloppy squat. Don't try to rush your squats. Squats can be very taxing from a cardiovascular standpoint, and I see some guys trying to rush, getting in two or three reps on one breath. Don't do this. This is sloppy squatting. This is going to contribute to looseness. This is going to contribute to all kinds of unwanted issues. Take your time on squats. Do them correctly. Lock down your elbows. Big breath. Brace. Squat. All right, issue number 19, also a very common thing. Once you back up on your squat, you need to glance down at your feet just for a second to make sure one foot's not in front of the other or to make sure one angle's not way out compared to the other. So back up, check your feet, and then we take a big breath and brace. You only need to do this on your first rep. But if you don't do this, you risk having one foot angled out a little bit more, one foot back, and this is super common. If you squat with one foot angled out or one foot back, what's going to happen is you're going to get some kind of wacky hip shift in the hole. The squat's going to feel unnatural. You're going to place a lot of stress, a lot of bad stress on your knees and hips. And this stress will carry over and contribute to unwanted lower back pressure. All right, issue number 20, extended walkout. You ever you ever watch somebody uh, unrack and then they walk out and they walk out and then their feet dance and then they walk out? Or like 20 seconds later and you're like, just get on with your squat, right? You are not trying to dance here. Get in the habit of taking a step back, checking your feet and squatting. Extended walkouts place extra burden on the cardiovascular system. Having a bar on your back is going to send your heart rate racing. So you need to get on with the set and stop screwing around. I know squats are hard, but walk back. Stop doing the seven-mile walkout, right? By, by the time you're 15 to 20 seconds into that walkout, your heart is racing, and it's just going to drop a couple reps from that set unless you're super lucky. All right, last but not least, the biggest one in coaching, and I can't tell you how many times I see this daily, the biggest issue, not opening your knees. This develops as a bad habit. A lot of guys will ask me, what's the cause? How do I fix it? It's a bad habit, bad habit. You see a lot of squatters as they descend, their knees are forward. Uh, you want to see the knees match the angle of the feet, and I've, I've mentioned that many times in this video. But watch squats from behind. It's very common to see the knees in or the knees forward on the angle of the feet. Again, this is going to throw your weight forward. It's going to place stress on your lower back. You're not going to be able to hit depth. If this is you, you need to back down to a light weight and work on a more natural squat where you allow your knees forward. Basically, what's happening is we're not utilizing our glutes at all in the squat. If you're just sitting here and you squeeze your glutes together, if you're sitting in a chair and you squeeze your glutes together, you're going to feel your legs kind of want to open, right? If you're loose, if your glutes are loose, your legs are going to kind of fall forward. So what's happening over time is squatters are basically training themselves to squat knees in as kind of a kind of a hesitation or they're very tentative or very uncertain about the squat. So they kind of brace or push their legs together as they squat. And when they do this, this takes a lot of the glutes out of the squat. The op we, we actually want the opposite. We want the glutes braced. This will help us to naturally open our legs in the hole. You got to get in the habit of opening those legs. I see some guys that are constantly doing this with their knees as they're descending. They're, they're fighting themselves. They they, they want to open their knees, but at the same time, they're trying to close it because they're scared. This is habit. You're going to have to rebuild 
from a light weight and get in the habit of opening your damn knees. All right, guys, that's it for the tips. So I'm going to dive into a little bit of video footage. This isn't going to contain all of the tips and issues we just talked about. I took some video submissions from YouTube. I appreciate everybody submitting them. I couldn't add them all. Some of the squats were so good, there's really nothing to comb through. Uh, a lot of the squats we didn't have from a back view, so we can't really look at the knee issues. But we're going to dive into some examples just to show you guys some of the common points and issues we just talked about. All right, so let's take a look. This is the first video, and we're going to look at no breath or brace on the second rep. This is a good example of a squatter taking a big visible breath or brace before the first rep, but you can see on the second rep he doesn't do it at all. So a second rep is always loose. A second rep in every pattern is always loose. Watch. Big breath, brace. You saw the big breath and brace. Let's look at it again. Big breath, brace. He locked down the arms. And watch, he doesn't do the same thing on the second rep. Runs right into it, okay? Third rep, big breath, brace, good habit. And then the fourth rep, nada. So this is kind of sloppy behavior. Uh, it's going to contribute to looseness on those second reps. All right, next video. We have butt wink or loose in the hole, no upper body tightness. So let's kind of go back a little bit. What this person is doing is they don't have any upper body tightness. And they're going to get loose in the hole and they're going to get butt wink. They need a little bit more control as they descend. See that butt wink down there? They're really loose and wobbly in the hole. See that? They're trying to go ass to grass, and they're trying to, it looks like they're trying to do a pause squat, but in the hole, they're getting really loose and really wobbly, and they're getting butt wing. This squatter would be better off trying to control, trying to stay tight and control the squat down, come to a natural depth, pause there, and then pop back up. All right, let's move on to the next one. Dancing fingers and open mouth. Now, we have to watch this one closely. Dancing fingers, again, is going to contribute to upper, upper body looseness. And this isn't a major issue on the squat. Some of these things, the squats are pretty decent. So I'm kind of just showing you. I, I had a limited number of submissions. It's not a bad squat at all. And when I critique these squats, most of them aren't bad squats at all. We're just kind of trying to dial in the details. But watch the finger looseness here. A okay, pretty reasonable squat width. Dancing fingers, dancing fingers. See, when the fingers are dancing, you're probably not going to have any, you're probably not going to have upper body tightness. This is a good squat. This is a very good squat. So, again, we're just trying to fix some minor things, but this person needs to lock down their elbows just a little bit before they descend, and they need to commit on that grip. Now, there's another issue I noticed here with an open mouth. A little bit of a dive bomb there. They rush that second squat a little bit. A little bit more control wouldn't hurt. Now watch this. He's taking a big breath, trying not to die on squats, and he squats with his mouth open. So there's no big breath, no upper body bracing. See how the mouth is open? Very uneven head position in this squatter as well. This squat is looking up, where the other ones were kind of more technical and neutral. Um, he was he, he lost a little bit of focus here, which isn't a big thing. But again, we're combing through video to try to fix your squat and try to make them as consistent as possible. Now, don't get me started on this guy bonking his belt every time in the hole <laughs> right there. That makes me super nervous. And that little bit of bump can cause a little bit of shift in the hole. And it can contribute to any crazy thing, knee stress, hamstring stress, et cetera. All right, let's take a look at this one, dive bombing or loosen the hole. This, this one's just a single rep. I had to put it on repeat. This is a very strong squat, but it's dive bombing, and you can see looseness in the hole. You can just see everything, your knees and everything getting pushed around because – once he gets to depth, it's just going so fast, so quick, no tightness. Once he gets to depth, everything's just bouncing like a like a rubber ball at the bottom. Watch right there. See that? This individual is very strong, but they need to focus on getting a good upper body tightness. 
controlling the squad, hitting good depth, and then popping back up. Over time, this type of looseness is going to take its toll on the body. It's going to contribute to unwanted lower back stress, unwanted knee stress, etc. Heels lifting and turning in. This is the only video I have on this, but we need to make sure we watch it very closely. Okay, so we, we're not able to see it on that rep. Let's see if we can watch it here. Watch as he squats. His knees are just going to be slightly inside the angle of his toes, and you should see the heels rise and turn in. See right there. You see the heel lifting and turning in. Now look at the angle of his right thigh. It's inside the angle of his right foot, and that's what's contributing to the heels rising and turning in. All right, here, knees are not opening to match the feet. This is harder to tell from a side view, and I wish I had a rear view of this video. But for this individual, pretty solid squat, but he's unable to hit depth because his knees aren't opening enough. This stance could be a little bit too wide, but in any case, you can see we're kind of half squatting. We're, we're getting into half squat territory because the, the knees are just a little bit inside of the foot angle. I can tell this because I've been watching squats for a long, long time. That left knee, that left thigh, the angle is inside of the foot, and that's causing him to be unable to reach depth. All right, here we have no breath embrace. This individual is just trying to jackrabbit through his squats. No breathing, no upper body tightness, no big breath, just going up and down. You, This is a great squat, and this person is built to squat, but he needs focus. He needs to have a big visible breath to brace the core, to lock down slightly, and then go down. This individual is just trying to get through a squat set. Good strength, but he needs that extra focus. All right, same thing here. No big breath embrace. Watch him at the top. Watch. You don't see a visible breath. You don't see a brace. He's just kind of going through reps. Go up, go down, go up, go down. See? Rushing the squat. The same issue as the last squatter. Take a big breath and brace. Now, this one right here is a great example of a lifter not checking his feet after he walks back. Okay, head is very forward. Watch his head. Now, he actually manages to get a really natural foot position. But look, is this repeatable? No, that's why we need to check our foot position before we do that first rep. You can see head stays straight here, and he doesn't look down. Immediately squats. A very good squat. Knees are forward a little bit. But, again, he didn't check his feet. Now, in this one, same issue, not checking your feet. You can see right here, it's very nuanced, but trust your eyeballs on this one. The left foot is back a little bit and angled more tightly than the right foot. If he would have checked his foot, he would have been able to scoot that left foot a little bit forward and match the angle of the right foot. But you can see things are just a little bit skewed. And what's going to happen is generally this is no big deal until it is a big deal. There's going to be one rep that it's going to bite you on that's going to place some unwanted stress on your knee. You're going to pick up a knee strain or hip issue or something like that. So no foot check, big breath, just watching for any hip shift in the hole. You can see that left foot is angled in a little bit and looks just a hair back. We're splitting hairs on this stuff, I know, but when you're squatting for 10, 15, 20 years, these things matter and we want to refine technique as much as possible. Now, take a look at, take a look at the angle of his thighs here. Things got kind of skewed around in the hole. His right thigh is now pointed more forward inside of his left knee, and his left thigh is angled out a little bit more. This could be from the unevenness of the setup, just causing some weird twists and turns and, and reactions of his lower body in the hole. All right. This one right here is a good example of taking too long between reps. This guy, you could, you could eat a sandwich between reps, and again, when you have the bar on your back, 
the longer you have the bar on your back, the more cardiovascular stress you're going to experience. Your heart rate is going to elevate and elevate, and it's going to get harder to get through a set. It's going to be harder to knock out those last few reps. So just watch here and be patient. Good execution, kind of too long of a pause in the hole. We only need to pause briefly, but we're just splitting hairs. A little bit of dancing fingers. And here's where we could eat a sandwich, take a nap, watch the person on the on the uh, treadmill, figure out what they're listening to. Then another good squat rep. All right. Here's an example of placing car unwanted cardiovascular stress on the body by walking back too far. We're walking back a country mile here. We're dancing back. Step back, step back, step back, step back, checking down, dialing in feet, dialing in feet more, still messing around, still waiting, still waiting, still waiting, still waiting, checking feet again. <laughs> you can see on that squat, taking way too long. This is something we want to avoid. We want to walk back. We want to check feet. We want to, we want to get our feet squared away. Then we want to just for mentally for a second, get our head in the game, take a big breath and go. All right, so we got a good side view here, and you can watch the bar subtly move forward on the squat. The reason why this is occurring is this squatter has a wide stance, a little bit wider than they probably should be taking. It's a, it's a, it's a decent squat, but we still need to improve it. The knees are, because of the width of the squat, the knees are inside the angle of the thighs. The knees are in a little bit, and this is a good example of how it's going to throw the bar forward. So you should see the bar come straight down, but watch. Forward. Watch the bar move forward towards the black area of the screen right there. Moving way forward. So that is, again, from having a wider stance and your knees are just unable to match the width of your thighs. And plus, he was kind of dive bombing or didn't really have good tightness or control in the upper body or lower body. Now, this is just a, vid this is, uh, just a picture. And this is something I provided on Team Massive Iron the other day. Someone contributed a squad video. And I'm kind of showing the, the little nuances here of what happens when the bar is not even on your back. This is a case of uneven uh, grip and uneven uh, bar placement. You can see on the right hand, there's a little bit of space between the smooth ring on the left hand. It looks like his thumb is inside of the ring. So uneven hand placement. The bar is uneven on your back. You can see where the smooth starts on both sides. And you can see everything's all skewed around and the right elbow is down a little bit more. The left elbow is flying. It's unbalanced. These are big issues when you squat. This is going to contribute to weird things, weird stress on the knees, hips, and lower back. So just keep an eye on that. All right, guys, that's it. A long ass video. I hope this helps some. If you have any questions or comments, let me know. If you need a form check, you can hit me up on Instagram at Ben the Barman at Ben the Barman or join TeamMassiveIron.com. So, guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So, guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.